let's look at an example of how applying a function can allow us to make predictions. Here's Sir Francis Galton, an early statistician. He was born in 1822, was eventually knighted before passing away in 1911, and he was a pioneer in making statistical predictions. How do you guess the value of something you want to know based on some value that you already know? He was particularly interested in heredity and whether, for example, he could breed extremely tall humans. Now, breeding humans is not something that we encourage these days, but the 1850s were quite a different time. So there's sort of a dark side to exactly what he was applying his newly found statistical techniques to, but we are going to look at one of those classical experiments because it was important in the history of statistics. By the way, he was Charles Darwin's half-cousin. Here's a table from one study that Francis Galton conducted where he measured several adults, their height, and then the heights of their parents. So even though this says child height, this is some adult's height in inches, and this height is for someone whose mother was 67 inches tall and father was 78 and a half inches tall. One discovery that Galton made was that the mother's height was more predictive of the child's height than the father's height. So he made this calculation about a mid-parent height, which was this plus 1.08 times that divided by 2. That exact formula is interesting for historical reasons, but not important. What is important is that this idea that maybe one of your two values might be more predictive than the other, and how you can combine those two values into one, and then use this to make a prediction about a child's height. Why might it have been the case that mother's heights were more predictive, meaning there was a stronger association between the mother and the child than the father and the child? I think it was the case that in the 1850s, if you went up to some adult and said, who's your mother, who's your father, they'd point to a woman and that was in fact their mother. They'd point to some man and most of the time that was their father, but not always. Hence, a weaker association between the father and the child. But in any case, let's move on and just focus on one row per child, the father's height, mother's height, and the child's height. I could draw overlapping histograms of those three columns, setting the unit to be inches. And I would see these three distributions. But these three distributions don't tell me how an individual child relates to his or her father or mother. In order to see the association, we need to look at a scatter diagram. The height of the mother, the height of the child, each dot is one child, several children might have the same mother, and several mothers might be the same height, so you might get a bunch of dots. Now it does appear that there's some positive association. Taller mothers seem to have taller children. Shorter mothers seem to have shorter children. We'll actually get a sharper association if we look at the average of the mother and the father. That's because we know more information about the child's heredity. So if I take the height table and I add another column, the parent average, which I can compute directly from the height column. Dividing by 2, we see that the parent average height and the child height are now in the same table. And let's just give a name to this table. Height is a fine name. And now we have all four columns. Once I have all four columns, then I can draw a scatter diagram that compares the parent to average height to the child's height. And I claim that this is a stronger association. You know more about the child's height by looking at the parent average, which means that instead of this looking like an amorphous blob, it's clearly sloped up and to the right compared with the mother diagram, which is more diffusely scattered around. 
When you see an association, that means that one value can be used to help you predict the other. Not exactly, but to give you a better guess than if you didn't know anything about the parents at all. So here's an idea. If I had to guess the height of a child for some particular parent, I would measure the average height of that pair of parents, and let's say it came out 68. I would then predict that their child is going to be similar to the children of other height 68 parents. So, one thing I could do is take all the dots that are in this range and average the children's height to get some value. Maybe it'll also be 68. Let's do the computation to figure it out. Before performing the computation, I'll just draw a couple of vertical lines on this chart. Ta-da! In order to show exactly what I'm doing, I'm taking all the dots within this range and averaging their child value. So I'm getting some number that's an average of the heights of all of these dots, where these dots are anything within a half of 68. So 67 and a half up to 68 and a half. We start with the height table. We find all of the rows where the parent average are between 67.5 and 68.5. Now we're down to just 185 children that are all close in height to the parent average that I care about, 68. And why did I pick 68? I just picked a number. Okay. Now that I have all the ones that are close, I could take the average height of the children. 67.6. So that's not a big surprise. If your parent's average height is 68, then the child's average height is uh, among all of those children that were children of 68 height parents is 67.6, somewhere near 68. Now we unleash the power of functions. I can take this logic and say this is my prediction. Based on my parent's average height, I can guess that the child's height will be similar to the height of the children that are close in height to the parent. This isn't always going to be 67 and a half to 68 and a half. It's going to be a little less than the parent's average height and a little more. So the point of functions is that I can generalize computation. And don't forget that you have to specify what value you want to return. So now I've written something that can predict the child's height for any average parent height. Average parent height of 68, and my prediction is that the child will be 67.6 inches tall. Average height of 65, oh, I think that child's height will be 65.8 inches tall. This is not because I'm just taking this number and perturbing it. I'm using the data. If you look at really tall parents, 71 inches tall, and I average those out, I'll get something that's different than 71. In this case, 70.4. Now I could keep typing in predict this, predict that, or I could apply the predict function to every parent average. And we'll call these the predictions and take a look at them. Notice that it does take a minute to compute because I'm calling a function many times over. And there are my predictions. Why are the first four the same? The first four rows were from children of the same parents. The predictions only based on the parents. If you have the same parents, you get the same prediction. Okay, let's put these predictions into a table. Let's focus on the height of the parent average, the height of the child, and then we want one more column, which is the predicted height of the child, using our predictions. And we'll give this whole table a name, P. So here's a real person, 73.2 inches tall, parent's average height was 72.75. According to our prediction algorithm, where we looked at all the similar parents and guessed that their children would be the average height of all of their children, 
We had predicted this child would be 70.1. Now we were wrong. We were a little too low here. But we were a little too high here. This couple had four children, and our prediction doesn't know which child we're talking about. It's just talking about some child in the abstract, and so we've guessed some average value, which is sometimes too high and sometimes too low. What's really interesting is if we look at all of these predictions in a scatter diagram. If you look at a parent of a particular height, say 68, they have children that range from 62 inches all the way up to 75 inches. So that's why we see this spread out cloud of points. But our prediction based only on the parent has to be a single guess. And so we've guessed that it's around 68. Now what's interesting about this chart is that all the yellow dots roughly fall on a line. Not exactly a line, these are real data, but close to a line. So close, in fact, that you might ask, what is that line? And we'll answer that question later on in the course. But remember, we got to this picture without coming up with any equations of lines or anything like that. Instead, we just looked. When we take a parent of 64 height and we look at all of the children, we find that on average their children are about 65 inches tall. That's where that dot came from. And we repeat that process over and over and over again, and we get a line. There's much less variability because these aren't the heights of real children. These are the heights of averages among many children.